At this point, if you did not know that the Saudi royal family is the richest in the world, you must be living under a rock. No offense. From sponsoring expensive football teams to owning luxury properties of extraordinary proportion, the wealth of the Saudi royal family breaks the imagination of the common man. Still don't believe me yet? Well, in this video, I present to you the Saudi royal family, the richest family in the world, the history. The history of the Saudi royal family begins with the Sheikhdom of Diria, a significant chapter in the family's journey to power. It was during this time that the foundation of the House of Saud was laid, setting the stage for their future dominance in the Arabian Peninsula. In the late 18th century, Muhammad bin Saud, the patriarch of the family, established the Sheikhdom of Diria. This marked the first step towards the unification of the fragmented Arabian tribes under the banner of the House of Saud. Muhammad bin Saud, a charismatic and ambitious leader, sought to expand his influence and establish a unified Arab state. Under the leadership of Muhammad bin Saud, the Sheikhdom of Diria flourished. The family formed alliances with the powerful and influential Wahhabi religious movement, led by Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. This alliance between the House of Saud and the Wahhabi movement would prove to be a defining factor in the family's rise to power. The Emirate of Diria emerged as the next phase in the House of Saud's journey. With the support of the Wahhabi religious movement, Muhammad bin Saud's son, Abdulaziz I, continued his father's mission of expansion and consolidation. Abdulaziz I was a formidable leader, known for his military prowess and strategic alliances. During his reign from 1765 to 1803, Abdulaziz I successfully conquered vast territories, including the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. This marked a significant turning point for the House of Saud, as their rule extended beyond the boundaries of Diria. The capture of Mecca and Medina solidified the family's religious legitimacy and further enhanced their status among the Arab tribes. However, the House of Saud's growing power and influence posed a threat to the Ottoman Empire, which sought to maintain control over the region. The Ottomans, alarmed by the rise of the Saudis and their alliance with the Wahhabi movement, launched a campaign to crush the House of Saud and the Wahhabi religious movement. In 1818, the Ottoman Empire, with the assistance of the Viceroy of Egypt, successfully defeated the Saudis and brought an end to the Emirate of Diria. The House of Saud was forced into exile, and the region fell under Ottoman control once again. Despite this setback, the House of Saud's determination and resilience would not be extinguished. The family went into hiding, biding their time and waiting for an opportunity to reclaim their power. Little did they know that their exile would be temporary, and a new chapter in their history was about to unfold. After the fall of the Emirate of Diria, the House of Saud faced a period of exile and uncertainty. However, their determination to reclaim their power and establish a unified Arab state remained unwavering. This led to the emergence of the Emirate of Nejd, a crucial phase in the history of the Saudi royal family. Under the leadership of Turki bin Abdullah, the grandson of Muhammad bin Saud, the House of Saud regrouped and began their quest to regain control. Turki bin Abdullah, a charismatic and strategic leader, sought to unite the Arabian tribes once again under the banner of the House of Saud. During his reign from 1823 to 1834, Turki bin Abdullah successfully expanded the influence of the House of Saud, with Riyadh as the capital of the newly formed Emirate of Nade. He established alliances with various tribes, forging strategic partnerships that would prove instrumental in the family's future in endeavors. However, the death of Turki bin Abdullah in 1834 led to a period of succession disputes and internal conflicts within the House of Saud. This resulted in a civil war that lasted for several years, weakening the family's position and threatening their aspirations for a unified Arab state. It wasn't until the rise of Faisal bin Turki, the son of Turki bin Abdullah, that the House of Saud regained its strength and stability. Faisal bin Turki, a skilled diplomat and military strategist, managed to reunite the family and consolidate their power. Under Faisal bin Turki's leadership, the Emirate of Nade experienced a period of prosperity and expansion. Faisal bin Turki's reign from 1843 to 1865 saw the family's influence extend beyond the borders of Najd as they conquered territories and established alliances with neighboring tribes. However, succession disputes once again plagued the House of Saud after the death of Faisal bin Turki. This led to a power vacuum and a period of instability within the family. It wasn't until the ascension of Abdul Rahman bin Faisal, the son of Faisal bin Turki, that the House of Saud regained its unity and focus. Abdul Rahman bin Faisal, a visionary leader, recognized the need for a unified Arab state and worked tirelessly to achieve this goal. He sought to expand the influence of the House of Saud and establish a centralized government that would bring stability and prosperity to the region. In 1902, Abdul Rahman bin Faisal's son, Abdulaziz ibn Saud, recaptured Riyadh from rival factions, marking a significant turning point in the family's history. With the capture of Riyadh, Abdulaziz ibn Saud laid the foundation for the establishment of the 
Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Abdulaziz ibn Saud, a charismatic and determined leader, embarked on a series of military campaigns to unify the Arabian Peninsula under his rule. Through strategic alliances, military prowess, and diplomatic negotiations, he successfully conquered various regions, including the eastern province, Asir, and the Hejaz. In 1932, Abdulaziz ibn Saud officially declared the establishment of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, solidifying the House of Saud's position as the ruling dynasty. He became the first king of Saudi Arabia and embarked on a mission to modernize the country and promote economic development. Under the leadership of subsequent kings, including Saud II, Faisal, Khalid, Fahd, Abdullah, and the current ruler, King Salman, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has experienced significant growth and transformation. The House of Saud has played a pivotal role in shaping the country's social, political, and economic landscape. The establishment of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia marked a new era for the House of Saud as they transitioned from regional leaders to global players. The family's vast wealth, derived from their holdings in Saudi Aramco and extensive fossil fuel reserves, has further solidified their influence on the world stage. Who is the leader of the royal family? The leader of the Saudi royal family is King Salman bin Abdulaziz, however. He appointed the crown prince Mohammed bin Salman, who basically rules the country due to his father's old age. His story begins when he was born into the prestigious Saudi royal family on August 31, 1985. Early on, he showed an interest in government and a remarkable ability to communicate with dignitaries. As he grew older, Mohammed's passion for politics only intensified. He enrolled at King Saud University, where he pursued a bachelor's degree in law, graduating in 2007. Armed with his newfound knowledge, Muhammad wasted no time in making his mark on the world. He founded several firms and even established a non-profit organization focused on promoting entrepreneurship in Saudi Arabia. But it was in 2009 that Muhammad's journey took a significant turn. He became a formal advisor to his father, King Salman bin Abdulaziz, who was then the governor of Riyadh. Little did anyone know that this role would be just the beginning of Muhammad's meteoric rise to power. In 2015, tragedy struck the royal family when King Abdullah passed away, and Salman Salman ascended to the throne. With his newfound power, King Salman appointed Muhammad as the defense minister, entrusting him with the responsibility of protecting the kingdom. It was during his tenure as defense minister that Muhammad launched Operation Decisive Storm, an aggressive military intervention in Yemen's civil war. The goal was to support the Yemeni government against the Houthi insurgency. However, despite the initial intentions, the campaign did not achieve its intended goals and instead resulted in a devastating humanitarian crisis. But Muhammad's ambitions didn't stop there. He was also given control of the state oil company Aramco and the Council of Economic and Developmental Affairs. With these positions, he aimed to open up Aramco for an initial public offering and implemented the Vision 2030 plan to attract foreign investment. In recognition of his exceptional leadership and determination, Mohammed was appointed Crown Prince in 2017. This marked a turning point in his journey as he wasted no time in pursuing his goals with unwavering determination. From spearheading a blockade against Qatar to implementing social reforms in Saudi Arabia, Muhammad's actions were both bold and controversial. He lifted the ban on cinemas, allowing entertainment to flourish, and granted women the right to attend sporting events and obtain driver's licenses. However, these reforms were met with skepticism, with many questioning whether they were motivated by a genuine desire for freedom or simply economic gain. Muhammad's image abroad took a significant hit in 2018 when he allegedly ordered the extrajudicial killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. The international community condemned the act, but the Saudi royal family deflected responsibility for the incident. Despite the controversy, Muhammad continued to consolidate his power. In 2020, he detained fellow members of the royal family under investigation for treason, sending shockwaves through the kingdom. Despite the economic challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, Muhammad's stature as a global economic player grew in 2022. His appointment as prime minister signaled his commitment to fostering more stable international relations. One of the most significant developments during this time was the historic deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Iran in March 2023. The restoration of ties between the two nations signaled a potential end to the civil war in Yemen, bringing hope for peace in the region. This breakthrough also strengthened Saudi ties with China, as both nations sought to enhance their economic cooperation and explore new avenues of collaboration. But Mohammed's international ambitions didn't stop there. He made headlines with his offer to normalize ties with Israel, a move that surprised many. However, this offer came with conditions, as he sought U.S. commitments to Saudi security and nuclear technology 
technology development. While these international developments were significant, Mohammed's economic vision for Saudi Arabia was equally transformative. He aimed to diversify the kingdom's economy and reduce its dependence on oil through his ambitious Vision 2030 plan. Under this plan, Mohammed sought to attract foreign investment, promote entrepreneurship, and create a thriving private sector. He recognized the need to adapt to a changing global landscape and position Saudi Arabia as a hub for innovation and economic growth. One of the key elements of Vision 2030 was the opening up of the state oil company Aramco for an initial public offering. This move aimed to generate revenue and increase transparency in the kingdom's oil industry. Mohammed's leadership has been marked by both ambitious reforms and controversial actions. As the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, he continues to shape the future of the kingdom and its role on the global stage, work assets and net worth. The House of Saud, the ruling dynasty of Saudi Arabia, holds significant political power not only within the country but also in the Middle East. With a lineage that can be traced back to Mohammed bin Saud, the founder of the first Saudi state, this family has faced opposition and controversy throughout its history. But what sets the House of Saud apart from other ruling families? It's their immense wealth. Estimates place their net worth in the billions or even trillions, making them the wealthiest family in the world. This staggering fortune is built on the country's vast oil reserves, which have fueled the Saudi economy for decades. The Saudi royal family's control over the country's oil resources has been a major factor in their accumulation of wealth. Saudi Arabia possesses the world's largest proven oil reserves, estimated at around 266 billion barrels. This immense wealth has allowed the royal family to amass a fortune that is beyond comprehension. One of the crown jewels of the Saudi royal family's assets is Saudi Aramco, the state-owned oil company. With an estimated value of trillions of dollars, Saudi Aramco is the world's most valuable company. Its vast oil reserves reserves and global reach have been a significant source of wealth for the royal family. The Saudi royal family's opulent lifestyle is evident in their palaces, private jets and luxury yachts. Their extravagant spending knows no bounds, with reports of multi-million dollar purchases of artwork, jewelry and even exotic animals. Their wealth is truly beyond comprehension. While the Saudi royal family enjoys unimaginable wealth, they are also known for their philanthropic endeavors. Through organizations like the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center, they have assisted those those in need both within Saudi Arabia and around the world. However, critics argue that these efforts are a mere fraction of their vast wealth and could be further expanded to address pressing global issues. The Saudi royal family's wealth extends beyond their borders, with significant investments in various industries and countries around the world. Their influence can be seen in sectors such as finance, real estate and entertainment. From owning prestigious properties in London and Paris to funding blockbuster Hollywood movies, their reach is truly global. The Saudi royal family's opulent lifestyle style is epitomized by their impressive collection of luxurious properties around the world. From sprawling palaces in Riyadh to extravagant mansions in Europe and the United States, their real estate portfolio is nothing short of extraordinary. These properties serve as symbols of their immense wealth and power. When it comes to transportation, the Saudi royal family spares no expense. They own a fleet of private jets, including the Airbus A380, the world's largest passenger aircraft. These jets are equipped with lavish interiors, featuring gold accents and luxurious amenities. Additionally, they possess a collection of extravagant yachts, allowing them to indulge in the most exclusive maritime experiences. The Saudi royal family's business empire extends far beyond the oil industry. They have diversified their investments into various sectors, including finance, telecommunications and entertainment. Through their holding company, Kingdom Holding Company, they have acquired stakes in global corporations such as Citigroup, Twitter and Euro Disney. These investments have further contributed to their immense wealth. The Saudi royal family's passion for art is evident in their extensive collection of masterpieces. They have been known to acquire rare and valuable artworks, often at exorbitant prices. Their influence in the art world is also demonstrated through initiatives like the King Abdulaziz Center for World Culture, which promotes cultural exchange and showcases artistic achievements. Getting into the specifics of how they spend their money, let's start with Prince Al-Walid bin Talal, a prominent member of the royal family and a renowned billionaire. Known for his love of cars, Prince Al-Walid has an impressive fleet that includes some of the most exclusive and expensive expensive automobiles in the world. From the sleek and powerful Bugatti Veyron to the iconic Rolls-Royce Phantom, his collection is a testament to his wealth and status. But Prince Al-Walid is not the only one with a penchant for luxury cars. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the de facto ruler of Saudi Arabia, also has a remarkable collection. His garage boasts a stunning Lamborghini Aventador, a Ferrari LaFerrari, and a rare McLaren P1. These high-performance machines are not just status symbols, but also a reflection of the royal family's extravagant lifestyle. It's not just just about the cars themselves, but also the customization that goes into them. The Saudi royal family spares no expense when it comes to personalizing their vehicles, from 
custom paint jobs to luxurious interiors, every detail is meticulously chosen to reflect their individual tastes and preferences, but their love for cars doesn't stop at personal collections. The Saudi royal family is also known for their generous gifts of luxury cars to foreign dignitaries and allies. These gestures not only strengthen diplomatic ties, but also serve as a display of their immense wealth and influence. In addition to cars, another area where the Saudi royal family splurges is on extravagant yachts. These floating palaces are a symbol of their opulence and provide the perfect setting for lavish parties and leisurely cruises. One notable example is the Yacht Kingdom 5KR, owned by Prince Al-Walid bin Talal. This magnificent vessel, once owned by the late Saudi King Fahd, is a sight to behold. With its luxurious amenities, including a helipad, swimming pool and multiple suites, it epitomizes the grandeur that the Saudi royal family is accustomed to. But it's not just about owning yachts. The Saudi royal family also enjoys chartering some of the world's most exclusive and luxurious vessels. From the crystal clear waters of the Mediterranean to the pristine beaches of the Caribbean, they spare no expense in experiencing the ultimate in luxury travel. As we continue our exploration of the Saudi royal family's extravagant spending, we cannot overlook their involvement in the world of football. The royal family's passion for the sport extends beyond being mere spectators. They have made significant investments in some of the most renowned football clubs around the globe. One such example is Prince Abdullah bin Musad, who acquired a 50% stake in the English football club Sheffield United. His investment not only injected much-needed funds into the club, but also brought international attention to the team. This move showcases the Saudi royal family's desire to be a part of the global football community and their willingness to invest in their passion. But it doesn't stop there. The Saudi royal family's influence in football extends to other clubs as well. They have been involved in various sponsorship deals and partnerships with top-tier teams, further solidifying their presence in the world of sports. Another notable example of how they spend their wealth is through Prince Al-Walid bin Talal's lavish palace in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. This opulent residence spans over 200,000 square feet and features exquisite architecture, lush gardens and a private zoo. With its grandeur and attention to detail, it serves as a testament to the royal family's taste for the finer things in life. But their real estate ventures extend far beyond the borders of Saudi Arabia. The Saudi royal family owns numerous properties in some of the most exclusive locations around the world, from luxurious penthouses in New York City to sprawling estates in London's prestigious neighborhoods. Their real estate portfolio is nothing short of extraordinary. One of the most iconic properties owned by the Saudi royal family is the Chateau Louis XIV, located just outside of Paris, France. This magnificent palace, inspired by the opulence of the 17th century, boasts lavish interiors, meticulously manicured gardens, and even a moat. With its price tag of over $300 million, it stands as a testament to the royal family's extravagant lifestyle. But it's not just about owning grand residences. The Saudi royal family also invests in high-end hotels and resorts. One notable example is the Four Seasons Hotel George V in Paris, which is partially owned by Prince Al-Walid bin Talal. This luxurious hotel, known for its impeccable service and stunning architecture, attracts elite travelers from around the world. In addition to real estate, the Saudi royal family also indulges in fine art and collectibles. Their vast collection includes priceless paintings, rare artifacts, and even rare gemstones. These treasures are not only a reflection of their immense wealth, but also serve as investments that appreciate in value over time. One notable piece in their collection is the Salvatore Mundi, a painting attributed to Leonardo da Vinci. This masterpiece, purchased by Prince Badr bin Abdullah, fetched a staggering $450 million at auction, making it one of the most expensive artworks ever sold. This acquisition not only showcases the royal family's appreciation for art, but also their ability to acquire the rarest and most sought-after pieces. How powerful are the royal family? In 1932, Ibn Saud declared the establishment of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, solidifying the House of Saud's position as the ruling dynasty. This marked a turning point in the history of the Arabian Peninsula and set the stage for the House of Saud's unparalleled power. The green flag of Saudi Arabia, with its iconic shihada and sword, became a symbol of the House of Saud's authority and the unity of the Saudi people. The House of Saud's journey to power was not without its challenges. They faced opposition from various groups, including the Ottoman Empire, the Sharif of Mecca, the Al Rashid family, and Islamist movements. Yet, through strategic alliances, military strength, and a deep connection to the Wahhabi religious establishment, the House of Saud prevailed. The Saudi royal family is truly powerful. The political system in Saudi Arabia is based on traditional Islamic lines, with decisions made through consultation among the king, the council of ministers, Islamic scholars, tribal leaders, and other traditional elites. The king, who holds the most influential position within the royal family, is both the head of state and government, wielding absolute 
absolute power. Today, the House of Saud is led by King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, who succeeded his half-brother Abdullah in 2015. Under his reign, the House of Saud continues to hold significant political power, shaping the destiny of Saudi Arabia and exerting influence on the global stage. The government itself is dominated by the royal family, with most of the important posts in the political system reserved for them. The key ministries, such as defense, finance and foreign affairs, are held by members of the royal family, ensuring their continued influence and control. The ulama, the body of Islamic religious leaders and jurists, also play a significant role in the political system. They have a strong influence over the judicial and education systems, shaping the legal framework and societal norms in accordance with Islamic principles. However, the House of Saud's rule has not been without controversy. Corruption allegations have plagued the political landscape, with accusations of nepotism, patronage systems, and blurred lines between state assets and the personal wealth of senior princes. These allegations have raised concerns about transparency and accountability within the Saudi political system. Turning our attention to the economic realm, the House of Saud's control over Saudi Arabia's vast oil reserves has granted them immense economic power. Saudi Arabia is one of the world's leading oil producers, and the royal family's wealth is built on the revenues generated from this valuable resource. The country's economy is heavily reliant on oil, with the revenues flowing into the central government in Riyadh. However, there is little public accounting of the total revenues to the Al Saud coffers or their spending on behalf of the people and the royal family. This lack of transparency has fueled debates about the distribution of wealth and the extent of the royal family's personal fortunes. In recent years, Saudi Arabia has embarked on ambitious economic reforms, aiming to diversify its economy and reduce its dependence on oil. These reforms, led by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, have sought to modernize the country and attract foreign investment. However, critics argue that the pace of these reforms has been slow or merely cosmetic. The House of Saud's political and economic power has allowed them to shape policies, forge alliances, and exert influence not only within Saudi Arabia but also on the global stage. Their immense wealth and connections have given them a seat at the table of international affairs, enabling them to play a significant role in regional and international politics, social works and philanthropy. To the Saudi royal family, life is not just about acquiring valuable assets. The Saudi royal family also engages in philanthropy. Their charitable endeavors span a wide range of causes, from education and healthcare to disaster relief and cultural preservation. Through their generous donations, they aim to make a positive impact on society and improve the lives of those in need. One notable example is Princess Lamia bint Majid Al Saud, who serves as the Secretary General of Al Walid Philanthropies. This organization, founded by Prince Al Walid bin Talal, focuses on empowering women, supporting youth development, and providing humanitarian aid. Their initiatives have touched the lives of millions around the world, showcasing the royal family's commitment to giving back. In the early years, the Saudi royal family laid the foundation for their remarkable philanthropic journey. Their commitment to social works began with the establishment of numerous charitable organizations and initiatives that aimed to uplift the lives of their fellow citizens. One of the key initiatives during this time was the creation of the King Abdulaziz Foundation for Research and Archives, founded in 1972, this organization focused on preserving and promoting the rich cultural heritage of Saudi Arabia. It funded research projects, published scholarly works, and organized exhibitions to showcase the country's history and traditions. Another significant contribution came in the form of the King Faisal Foundation, established in 1976. Named after King Faisal bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, this foundation aimed to promote education, healthcare, and social welfare. It provided scholarships to Saudi students, supported medical research, and funded the construction of hospitals and clinics across the country. During the 1980s, the Saudi royal family extended their philanthropic efforts to the international stage. They established the International Islamic Relief Organization, IRO, in 1978, which became one of the largest humanitarian organizations in the world. The IRO focused on providing aid and support to Muslim communities in need, regardless of their geographical location. From disaster relief to poverty alleviation, the IRO played a crucial role in improving the lives of millions. In addition to these institutional initiatives, individual members of the Saudi royal family also made significant contributions. Prince Al-Walid bin Talal, known for his immense wealth, has been actively involved in philanthropy for decades. His Al-Walid Philanthropies Foundation has supported numerous causes, including education, healthcare, and women's empowerment, both within Saudi Arabia and globally. Princess Adela bint Abdullah, the daughter of King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, has also been a driving force in philanthropy. She 
established the Adela Foundation, which focuses on improving the lives of women and children in Saudi Arabia. The foundation has implemented various programs, including vocational training, healthcare initiatives, and support for victims of domestic violence. The Saudi royal family's commitment to social works and philanthropy continued to grow in the 1990s and early 2000s. They recognized the importance of investing in education and established numerous universities and educational institutions across the country. King Fahd University of Petroleum and Minerals, King Saud University, and Princess Noura bint Abdulrahman University are just a few examples of their dedication to providing quality education to Saudi citizens. Furthermore, the Saudi royal family has been actively involved in humanitarian efforts during times of crisis. They have provided substantial financial aid to countries affected by natural disasters, such as earthquakes and floods. Their contributions have helped rebuild communities, provide essential supplies, and support the affected populations in their recovery. It is important to note that the Saudi royal family's philanthropic efforts are not limited to financial contributions. They actively engage in hands-on initiatives, visiting hospitals, schools, and charitable organizations to understand the needs of the people and provide direct support. Their personal involvement and dedication to making a difference have inspired countless individuals and organizations to join the cause. In recent years, the Saudi royal family has continued to demonstrate their unwavering commitment to philanthropy through a range of impactful initiatives. These projects have addressed pressing social issues, promoted cultural development, and provided aid to those in need, both within Saudi Arabia and around the world. One notable recent initiative is the MISC Foundation, established by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in 2011. The foundation aims to empower Saudi youth by providing them with opportunities for education, entrepreneurship, and leadership development. Through through various programs and partnerships, the MISC Foundation has supported thousands of young Saudis in realizing their full potential and contributing to the nation's progress. Another significant project is the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center (KS Relief), established in 2015. This organization plays a vital role in providing humanitarian assistance to countries affected by conflicts, natural disasters, and other crises. KS Relief has been at the forefront of relief efforts, delivering essential aid, medical supplies, and emergency support to millions of people in need worldwide. The Saudi royal family has also made substantial contributions to the field of healthcare. The King Salman Center for Disability Research, founded in 2016, focuses on improving the lives of individuals with disabilities through research, innovation, and advocacy. The center has pioneered groundbreaking initiatives and technologies that have enhanced accessibility and inclusivity for people with disabilities. In addition to these institutional initiatives, individual members of the Saudi royal family have spearheaded projects that address specific social issues. Princess Rima bint Bandar Al Saud, the Saudi ambassador to the United States, has been a prominent advocate for women's rights and empowerment. Her efforts have included initiatives to increase women's participation in the workforce, promote gender equality, and combat domestic violence. Prince Sultan bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, the first Saudi astronaut and president of the Saudi Commission for Tourism and National Heritage, has played a pivotal role in preserving and promoting Saudi Arabia's cultural heritage. Under his leadership, the Commission Mission has undertaken extensive restoration projects, developed tourism infrastructure, and organized cultural events to showcase the country's rich history and traditions. The Saudi royal family has also been actively involved in supporting global education initiatives. The Al Walid Philanthropies Foundation, led by Prince Al Walid bin Talal, has made significant contributions to educational institutions and programs worldwide. Their support has enabled underprivileged students to access quality education, funded research projects, and facilitated knowledge knowledge exchange between Saudi Arabia and the international community. Furthermore, the Saudi royal family has been at the forefront of efforts to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. They have provided substantial financial aid, medical supplies, and resources to countries affected by the virus. Their contributions have supported healthcare systems, facilitated vaccine distribution, and helped mitigate the impact of the pandemic on vulnerable populations. That brings us to the end of this video. We hope that you like it. If you would like to watch other videos like this, click on the cards on your screen.